So in this exercise, we're going to be talking about cultivating joy. I thought joy was about having fun with my friends, you know, hanging out, um, being success successful in my career, um, all of the kind of external things. And I didn't realize that a lot of my makeup and my understanding of joy was with the mind frame that it would be brought to me by those in my lives, that there would be people that would make my joy a priority for them. And it was a long journey into realizing that it was my responsibility to make joy something that was important to me. And I don't think we often think about joy that way. We wait for it to happen, wait for something funny to happen, we wait for you know someone to bring it to us. But this is a way where we can have this list and then when, the th when things get tough, we can have this to reference back to and begin to bring that joy back into our own lives. So I'm gonna be using the list format here. And I find this really easy because, I mean, you can just go on and on and on about the things that bring you joy. So for me, I'm gonna start with a title before I do my list. So what brings me joy? And the first thing that I always think about is people watching. Um, I think being a New Yorker in general, my God, the things you see when you're walking around, like someone being helped across the street, watching someone, uh, a, a couple in love, and you can tell they're on their third date and it's still all new and fresh, like all of those things like really bring me joy um, and are just fun to me and help me, you know, remember like the, the easygoing parts of life and kind of get out of um, my TV, social media mind frame and just stuck in, you know, the negative negative parts that um, are a natural part of life, but that can kind of bring us down. Another thing that brings me a lot of joy is when I wake up the first time my alarm goes off. That is not often, <laughs> but it really makes me uh, feel like I've prioritized my self-care in a way where I can actually wake up on time. This is another small thing, but when Trader Joe's has eucalyptus, <laughs> Joy, it smells great. It's, uh, I'm gonna jack up the spelling, but that's the beauty of uh, journaling. It's just for me, only every one um, of you guys and me knows I can't spell eucalyptus. I love fresh flowers. Um, I love when my kids laugh. Like them laughing makes me laugh. And then we just are like three crazy people laughing. I really love really good wine preferably red, and Malbec. <laughs> um, I, I am from New York, and I've said that a few times, but New York City is just like, as soon as I can see the skyline, I'm like, yes, joy. The ocean, I actually have a meditation app that I listen to, and it brings me a lot of joy um, hearing that before bed. Memes on social media innate joy. Cuomo on CNN. I love his uh, dialogue with Don Lemon before they pass it off. This is how you know I'm like firmly in my 30s. It's hilarious to me. I stay up for that every single night. I'm like finding the joy as I'm doing this. If you don't, it's just like thinking about the things that make you happy. It really uh, changes your mood instantly. So I'm gonna stop here, but I think this is a really good example of how focusing on the little, I mean, these are like really small things that um, throughout the day, just reflecting back on them, remind me of how much joy I get out of the time that I spend focusing on the, the small things in life. You know, like Trader Joe's, for example, that's during my errand time, but tons of joy from that. Um, same thing with fresh flowers, kids laughter, you know, that's a completely free experience. And um, sometimes I get that even from people watching. So sometimes I circle back and I'm like, oh, wow, that's double joy there. So one of the things that comes up a lot after you finish your joy list is like, that was great, but how can I integrate this into my life? Um, and so I just want to reflect back for a second into the pie chart. And I think finding ways that you can integrate it into your life and you know, be more actionable about it, helps you to, again, take back your power and some empowering experience. So for me, the Trader Joe's experience is in my errands and blah, you know, I don't really like my errands. Remembering that during that errand time, I'm actually having joyful experiences. So even though I don't enjoy running errands all the time, this is an amazing time for me to be more present to the things that do bring me joy. Another thing is during family time, for me, seeing 
the places that my joy shows up that I often forget when I look at my day and I'm like overwhelmed by the amount of things that I have going on, remembering all of the joyful things that take place in them. Um, adulting time often leads to that glass of wine, lots of joy. The ocean, that's in my downtime, listening to my meditation app. That also usually comes from adulting in itself. Work leads to more time in New York City and I love New York, so this is more joy. I think that just being honest about, there are parts of these charts that really suck um, and that can, can be draining to you know, our day-to-day -day lives and our experiences, but trying to change our mind frames to being more present to the places that joy already exists within these helps us to change our mind frames, helps us to get back to, this is what actually makes me happy. This is where I actually shine. This is where I feel good. And it doesn't mean acting like these other sucky things don't exist, but we can have both. And that's the important piece, understanding that it can be like sucky by five o'clock, but by 5.30, I'm looking at eucalyptus and I'm happy. And so, you know, just bringing that into your experience more and understanding that this is all created by us. There are people that influence it. There are people that come in and out of it, but we are in charge of this experience here. And we're also in charge of bringing this in. So I hope that this was helpful for you to see how you can kind of intersect writing practices and you can take things that you learn from one writing practice and bring more perspective to another. And I mean, this can lead to so many different writing prompts, but I hope that this really helps you to understand and uh, gain more clarity around how journaling is so expansive and we can make it look very different in so many different ways.